November 2nd, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 19 and 20 from the Old Testament. And you sing a lament for the princes of Israel, and say, What a lioness was your mother among the lions! She lay among young lions. She reared her cubs. She reared one of her cubs. He became a young lion. He learned to tear prey. He devoured people. The nations heard about him. He was trapped in their pit. They brought him with hooks to the land of Egypt. When she realized that she waited in vain, her hope was lost. She took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. He walked about among the lions. He became a young lion. He learned to tear prey. He devoured people. He broke down their strongholds and devastated their cities. The land and everything in it was frightened at the sound of his roaring. The nations, the surrounding regions, attacked him. They threw their net over him. He was caught in their pit. They put him in a collar with hooks. They brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him to prison so that his voice would not be heard any longer on the mountains of Israel. Your mother was like a vine in your vineyard planted by water. It was fruitful and full of branches because it was well watered. Its boughs were strong, fit for ruler scepters. It reached up into the clouds. It stood out because of its height and its many branches. But it was plucked up in anger. It was thrown down to the ground. The east wind dried up its fruit. Its strong branches broke off and withered. A fire consumed them. Now it is planted in the wilderness, in a dry and thirsty land. A fire has gone out from its branch. It has consumed its shoot and its fruit. No strong branch was left in it, nor a scepter to rule. This is a lament song and has become a lament song. In the seventh year, in the fifth month, on the tenth of the month, some of the elders of Israel came to seek the Lord, and they sat down in front of me. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, speak to the elders of Israel and tell them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Are you coming to seek me? As surely as I live, I will not allow you to seek me, declares the Sovereign Lord. Are you willing to pronounce judgment? Are you willing to pronounce judgment, son of man? Then confront them with the abominable practices of their fathers and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On the day I choose Israel, I swore to the descendants of the house of Jacob and made myself known to them in the land of Egypt. I swore to them, I am the Lord your God. On that day I swore to bring them out of the land of Egypt, to a land which I had picked out for them, a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. I said to them, Each of you must get rid of the detestable idols you keep before you, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me and refused to listen to me. No one got rid of their detestable idols, nor did they abandon the idols of Egypt. Then I decided to pour out my rage on them and fully vent my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. I acted for the sake of my reputation, so that I would not be profane before the nations among whom they lived, before whom I revealed myself by bringing them out of the land of Egypt. So I brought them out of the land of Egypt and led them to the wilderness. I gave them my statutes and revealed my regulations to them. The one who carries them out will live by them. I also gave them my Sabbath as a reminder of our relationship so that they would know that I, the Lord, sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They did not follow my statutes. And they rejected my regulations. The one who obeys them will live by them. And they utterly desecrated my Sabbath. So I decided to pour out my rage on them in the wilderness and destroy them. I acted for the sake of my reputation so that I would not be profane before the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. I also swore to them in the wilderness that I would not bring them to the land I had given them a land flowing with milk and honey, the most beautiful of all lands. I did this because they rejected my regulations, did not follow my statutes, and desecrated my Sabbaths, for their hearts followed their idols. Yet I had pity on them and did not destroy them. 
So I did not make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said to their children in the wilderness, Do not follow the practices of your fathers. Do not observe their regulations, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Follow my statutes, observe my regulations, and carry them out. Treat my Sabbaths as holy, and they will be a reminder of our relationship. And then you will know that I am the Lord your God. But the children rebelled against me, did not follow my statutes, did not observe my regulations by carrying them out. The one who obeys them will live by them. And desecrated my Sabbaths. I decided to pour out my rage on them and fully vent my anger against them in the wilderness. But I refrained from doing so and acted instead for the sake of my reputation, so that I would not be profane before the nations in whose sight I had brought them out. I also swore to them in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the nations and disperse them throughout the lands. I did this because they did not observe my regulations. They rejected my statutes, they desecrated my Sabbaths, and their eyes were fixed on their father's idols. I also gave them decrees which were not good and regulations by which they could not live. I declared them to be defiled because of their sacrifices. They caused all their firstborn to pass through the fire, so that I would devastate them, so that they will know that I am the Lord. Therefore speak to the house of Israel, son of man, and tell them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. In this way, too, your fathers blasphemed me when they were unfaithful to me. I brought them to the land which I swore to give them. But whenever they saw any high hill or leafy tree, they offered their sacrifices there and presented the offerings that provoked me to anger. They offered their soothing aroma there and poured out their drink offerings. So I said to them, What is this high place you go to? So it is called high place to this day. Therefore say to the house of Israel, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Will you defile yourselves like your fathers and engage in prostitution with detestable idols? When you present your sacrifices, when you make your sons pass through the fire, you defile yourselves with all your idols to this very day. Will I allow you to seek me, O house of Israel? As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I will not allow you to seek me. What you plan will never happen. You say we will be like the nations, like the clans of the lands who serve gods of wood and stone. As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, with a powerful hand and an outstretched arm and with an outpouring of rage, I will be king over you. I will bring you out from the nations and will gather you from the lands where you are scattered, with a powerful hand and an outstretched arm and with an outpouring of rage. I will bring you into the wilderness of the nations, and there I will enter into judgment with you face to face. Just as I entered into judgment with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so I will enter into judgment with you, declares the Sovereign Lord. I will make you pass under the shepherd's staff, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. I will eliminate from among you the rebels and those who revolt against me. I will bring them out from the land where they have been residing, but they will not come to the land of Israel. Then you will know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Each of you go and serve your idols, if you will not listen to me. But my holy name will not be profaned again by your sacrifices and your idols. For there on my holy mountain, the high mountain of Israel, declares the Sovereign Lord, all the house of Israel will serve me, all of them in the land. I will accept them there, and there I will seek your contributions and your choice gifts with all your holy things. When I bring you out from the nations and gather you from the lands where you are scattered, I will accept you along with your soothing aroma. I will display my holiness among you in the sight of the nations. Then you will know that I am the Lord when I bring you to the land of Israel, to the land I swore to give to your fathers. And there you will remember your conduct and all your deeds by which you defiled yourselves. You will despise yourselves because of all the evil deeds you have done. 
Then you will know that I am the Lord when I deal with you for the sake of my reputation and not according to your wicked conduct and corrupt deeds, O house of Israel, declares the sovereign Lord. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, turn toward the south and speak out against the south. Prophesy against the open scrubland of the Negev and say to the scrubland of the Negev, Hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look here, I am about to start a fire in you and it will devour every green tree and every dry tree in you. The flaming fire will not be extinguished and the whole surface of the ground from the Negev to the north will be scorched by it. And everyone will see that I, the Lord, have burned it. It will not be extinguished. Then I said, O Sovereign Lord, they are saying of me, does he not simply speak in eloquent figures of speech? God, it's so uh, interesting, these couple chapters. You know, we're going along just fine. And for the most part, kind of understanding what Ezekiel's talking about with Israel and Babylon and all of those situations. And then we get to this, like, kind of strange part. Um, I even stumbled over the recording of it where you're talking about them not behaving, not observing your regulations, not carrying them out, desecrating your Sabbaths. And, and you actually talk about that a few different times uh, in a few different ways. And then you say something really interesting. You say, I also gave them decrees which were not good and regulations by which they could not live. And a lot of people are like, uh, what? <laughs> What's God doing? But I find this interesting that we honestly and arrogantly think that we can go on sinning time after time after time again, just like Israel did, without any consequences. And sometimes we might even think, oh, there's consequences or discipline, but we may not understand the full ramifications of that. Uh, I would say partly because we're pretty spoiled <laughs> would be the reason for that. We, we think of you as a good God and a big God and a God who gives us things. And we have that so incredibly backwards that our humbleness and obedience should come first in our lives. And when you say that, you'll, that you gave them decrees which weren't good and regulations that they couldn't even live by, uh, referring to obviously all of the pagan pieces, the idols that were happening in the land at the time, uh, the decrees and the regulations you did give them were good for them, were beneficial, were healthy, um, would draw them to a closer relationship to you, would glorify you. And you said, you know what, um, if you are going to continually seek your idols, if you're going to continually seek something besides me, continually seek other gods, uh, I'm just going to get to the point where I give you up to them. Um, and I know full well, God, uh, after studying the Bible as much as I have and watching you work in my own life, more importantly, that you always do that for intent, for two reasons. One, to ultimately glorify you, and two, for reconciliation, that there'll come a point in time that those sinful urges, those idols, those comforts in our life, that financial need, those relationships, whatever it is that we're trying to have in our life instead of you, won't be what we need, won't be what we want, won't be what fulfills us. And eventually we will turn to you and seek you with our whole hearts. And ultimately, again, that will glorify you. But I find it fascinating in the middle of all this, you're telling them, <clears throat> look, I gave you all these things. I gave you great decrees. I ga gave you great regulations. I gave you great commandments to follow. These were all for your protection because I love you so very much. And you can even follow them. And so if you want something else besides me, you can have it. I know that there's been plenty of times in my life that you have given me over to things that I seem intent on seeking instead of you. And... Every single time I came back to you um, with a deeper relationship with you. It doesn't give me reason to go and, and pursue my other idols. Uh, but it always glorified you in the end, which is ultimately what is always going to happen. And God, I just ask today that if there's anything in our lives that 
uh, you have given us over to if there's any sin if there's any urges if there's any uh, choices if there's any idols if there's any anything in our life that we're choosing that you are giving us over to God I just pray for reconciliation back with you that you just make those things really clear for us really uncomfortable for us uh, and allow our hearts and minds to be fully aware and transparent of what is happening uh, that you have stepped aside and said fine if you want this this bad you can have it um, I see that a lot in my relationships in my life um, where <laughs> I get so adamant about having a relationship in my life and you just step aside and say okay if you're not gonna listen to me you're gonna learn and you're gonna learn the hard way and it's gonna hurt my heart but I need you to learn this and and then I learn the lesson and and we move on from there but if there's anything in my life that you are currently giving me over to that I'm just not being aware of I'm just being blinded by just make those really clear to me God so that I can work on them I can change them and I can walk away from them uh, and back to your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness which I don't deserve ever but somehow amazingly you give it to me filled with love in your son's name I pray amen